Hello and happy Thursday. Welcome to State Listings Inc., the home of My State MLS and New York State MLS. My name is Dave. This is going to be our first session in Marketing May, where we're going to be taking a look at different aspects of marketing yourself, your business, your listings, and how you can use all of these new techniques and lessons that we're going to show you over the course of the next few weeks, how you can apply those to your business and market yourself in ways you have never done before. And today is session one of this four-week series, where today we're going to be taking a look at digital marketing for real estate. As we go through the entire month, we're going to be covering different topics of marketing that you're going to be able to use right now. And of course, with the coronavirus, COVID-19, we've certainly adjusted some of the things that we're going to be talking about this month and how it can relate to these work from home orders, these social distancing measures that we're all having to take. The first thing that we're going to want to talk about is having an online presence. Yes, you may have social media, you may have a Facebook page, but you may be missing that key aspect when it comes to internet presence, and that is a website. Especially right now, buyers are doing their online searches more than ever before. And a lot of times, buyers are doing searches before they even reach out to an agent. Before the dawn of the internet, when people were in the market to buy a house, they were ready to sell their house, they didn't do things on the online. They had to go meet with a broker, they had to meet with a salesperson, and they had to coordinate with that person to get their listing online, to help find those houses that they were looking for. But now it's sites like Realtor.com, Zillow, Truly, the list goes on and on. Buyers are now more than ever doing their own home searches online, and before they even make contact with an agent, they're already looking for properties. And chances are they're not going to reach out to an agent until they find a house that they like. Uh, and without a website, you can't control what they find first. They may find profiles that you don't check anymore. They may find a bad review for you from one disgruntled buyer from five, ten years ago on a disreputable website. So having a website is going to be very, very key to you. Even if it's just a simple website, having some online presence that just goes beyond a Facebook page or an Instagram page can certainly help you in the long run because as buyers try to go find an agent to represent them, they may just say, real estate agents in my area. And if you have proper search engine optimization, you've got a nice website. That website could populate at the top of their online searches that they could go ahead and click and get that first introduction to you. Remember, even having just a basic website is going to be better than nothing. So if you don't have a website, they may not find you at all. But if you do have a website and they do that search, they see you, there you go. That website can be on all of your business cards. So of course, as you're handing out business cards, you're leaving them on the cork board of your favorite restaurant in town. A business card is great, but if you have a website that that potential buyer, that potential seller can just log in and learn more about you is going to go a long way. And when it comes to having that real estate presence, it's also going to legitimize who you are and that you are an established broker salesperson in your area. We've seen over the course of years a wide range of real estate scams, schemes, fraudulent activity, people putting up fake listings online and saying, yeah, just send me $500 and I'll save that listing for you and we'll be able to move you in. The person sends $500 and that so-called agent just disappears into the night because it was a scam. But if you've got a nice website that's going to allow you to create a platform for buyers and sellers to see you, learn more about you, and even contact you, that's a great start for you. Again, you don't need to have anything crazy. You can just have the minimum needs for sellers, for buyers. The bare minimum could be all you really need. Uh, so here's a, a, a small checklist as into what your website should have when it comes to creating that platform to promote yourself and your business. So again, at least you're going to want to have your company name, your logo. If you can incorporate your listings into the website, absolutely, by all means, do that. If you're part of an MLS, such as My State MLS or New York State MLS, remember, you can incorporate that IDX feed as well. 
If you don't have IDX implemented on your website and you're saying, I don't even know what that is, well, an IDX is a way for you to get more listings on your website. So you'll be able to promote the listings from your area, from other brokerages right on your website. And what'll happen is as those potential buyers come to your website, they're gonna search those properties. Yes, those properties may be represented by other sellers, by other brokerages, but they're browsing that listing on your website. So that means they're gonna be able to contact you directly and you're gonna be able to collect that lead for that listing, even if it's not yours. And of course, just think of a website as your digital business card. So in addition to having that information about you, you're also gonna to wanna to be able to have all of your contact information. So at bare minimum, it's gonna be your email, your phone number, the address of the office. And of course, if you can, you can implement those contact means into a form directly on your site. So instead of having potential customers see your email on the site and then having to go to their email client, there can be a form right on your website where the potential buyer, the potential seller can just put in their name, put in their phone number, put in their email and then say, hey, I'm interested in selling my house or hey, I saw a listing on your website that I'd like to buy that lead is gonna go directly to you. So you're gonna make your website their one-stop shop where they can do everything from searching to contacting you to getting their house listed, all from your website. If you're a broker and you've got different agents working with you, of course, you can also have bio pages as well for not only yourself, but your entire team. When it comes to having websites, having a website that's compatible with cell phones and tablets is going to be a great thing as well because mobile web traffic has surpassed desktops. Yes, we still use laptops, we still use desktop computers when we're doing our business, but the fact is three years ago, mobile devices surpassed desktop usage. I know I'm guilty of it. If I'm not at my desk at work, when I'm browsing the internet, I'm not using a laptop. I'm using my phone and I'm doing my Google searches. I'm doing my shopping. Everything I do now is pretty much on my cell phone. I rarely use a desktop computer except when I'm here from my nine to five doing my work here at the MLS. Everything outside of that is pretty much done at the palm of my hand. So you have to make sure that your website is also mobile friendly. And if it's not, you could be missing out on a great deal of potential customers because your website may not be displaying properly on their device. And we're not saying that you need to have an app. You don't have to develop an app. In fact, we don't even use apps here at the MLS. And there's a couple different reasons for that, because of course we know with our cell phones, with our tablets, the operating system is going through updates. Every time Apple releases a new iPhone each year, they're also releasing a new operating system for that phone. And when those new operating systems come out, those big updates happen on phones, the developers of different apps have to go through and they have to retest that app and make sure that the app is compatible with all of the new OSs, with all of the new phones. Whereas if you can just create a website and make it responsive, that means it's gonna work on any device and it's not gonna matter what kind of operating system it has. It's not gonna depend what kind of phone it is, how big the screen is, because the responsive site is going to work in that device's browser no matter what. Even if you're looking at that phone in landscape mode or portrait mode, that site is going to go ahead and it's going to convert itself. It's going to transform itself. It's responding to the device that it's on and it's convert itself to display properly on that site. So if you do not have a responsive site, if you've got an old website that you built a decade ago and it hasn't really been updated, just do yourself a favor. Go log on to your company website using your phone and see what it looks like. If it doesn't look proper, if it's all pushed over, it's spread out, it's not displaying properly, it may be time for you to go ahead and update your website. You may be surprised, you may find out that there have been people trying to go to your site and been completely turned away because once they log on with their phone, they can't browse anything. If you wanna make your website even better when it comes to that mobile experience is consider a texting number for leads. And what that means is you can have your customers and your potential clients, as they contact you from your website, you can have those contact forms and those leads go directly to your cell phone. Because again, lots of buyers, we especially know younger buyers are now in the market more than ever looking for homes now. So we've got some of the youngest generations now in the housing market starting to look for properties. and we know most of them don't like actual conversations. They'd rather text. So if they can just send you a quick text 
when it comes to asking about a property. Having that ability for them to do that can certainly help entice someone to want to reach out to you. Sticking with your website, another important feature is, of course, you've got your website up. Again, if you're still using that same website from over a decade ago, chances are you're probably ignoring this tip as well, and that's just keeping it updated. If your site has not been touched in two years, especially anything older than that, it could make you look unprofessional. It could not come off uh, in a positive light because, again, lots of newer sites are just adding new features. They're being responsive. And especially if you have that older website, it may not be working on mobile devices at all. But it's important to keep your website up to date as much as possible. That might be just small things. Update your bios. Update your company pages. Update your information about the agents working at the company. Just having new photos for each agent, that may be a, a tip too. Just go ahead and get new photos taken for you and your team on your website. If you're still showing those old photos, it's gonna be obvious. I'm going off on a tangent here, but you know, consider bringing in a professional photographer, give them the liberty to take control of how the photos look. You may be surprised at some ideas that they present to you to create nice headshots that may deviate away from the norm of just having that white backdrop behind you that may just improve the aesthetics of your website, of your bios, when people are viewing your website online. If you've got the ability to update your website automatically through a feed of your MLS, that's even better. So if you're part of My State MLS, we do offer website design services. We're going to get into that a little bit. And the benefit of that is any changes that you make within the MLS, whether it's, of course, to your listings or if you update your agent bio page, that's going to automatically update on your company website. So a great way to get those updates is going to be through the MLS that you're using and having those updates go directly to your site. So if you're not sure where to look, just look at some of the other brokerages in your area, see what their websites look like, see what works for you, what doesn't, what you think they're doing right, what do you think that they're doing wrong. Just take a look and see what some of the other firms in your area are doing. Then, of course, just search real estate firms in different areas of your state, different areas of the country. Just Google the name of the city and add on the word real estate. See what websites pop up. This may help you learn a little bit more about search engine optimization, which again is going to be a very important aspect of making sure that your listings populate higher on those search results as potential customers, potential buyers, potential sellers do their searches online, trying to find that real estate agent that works best for them. And we're not saying just steal someone's website entirely and you know slap a new coat of paint on it, but just see what works, see what doesn't work, so you can go ahead and make the perfect hybrid website for you. So again, we're looking here at Simon Gray Realty at simongray.com, and you can see this is the home screen that they've got here on their website now. They've got a nice search bar right there in the center of the screen, so you can go ahead and start typing in the area that you're looking for. Again, if you're working in your area, they're going to search in that area. And you can see this here is some of the responsive designs that we've talked about. On the left-hand side of the screen is how the listing would look on a cell phone. You can see it's designed specifically for that portrait mode going up and down. They've got that search bar at the top. They still have the full details for the listing. Then, of course, as we mentioned before, that contact form is going to be very, very important as well. Because potential buyers, potential sellers, if they come across your website and they want more information, instead of them having to jump through hoops, try to open up their email client, type in your email address, they can just fill out a form and that's going to go directly to your inbox. Next up today, we're going to be talking about listings. So we're going to be talking about your listings and how your current listing marketing strategy looks today and how does it fit into the economic climate that we're working with today. So let's jump in and talk about listing photos. Right now, in this current market where we're having to practice social distancing, open houses are not allowed. Depending on where you're doing business, your state may not be allowing people to walk through properties at all. Listing photos are going to be increasingly critical and the most important that they've ever been during this time. And as we said before, buyers may not be reaching out to agents until they find a house that suits their needs. So you've got to make sure that you've got the best foot forward. So the photos that you post on your listings are going to be very important because they are what's going to offer that first impression to that potential buyer, to that customer that's looking for a property. Because again, they may not be reaching out with to you saying, hey, I'm interested in buying a house. I don't have one in mind yet. 
but I'm ready to work with you. That doesn't really happen as often as it used to anymore. Now, buyers are just going out, doing their own home searches until they find that house that they like the best and say, hey, I like this specific house that you're listing. So it's important that you get those best photos out there and in front of those potential buyers because that's going to really get your foot in the door and make sure that they reach out to you. And just like having a website, having a listing without photos may not look legitimate. It may look like a scam. It may not look presentable. It may not look professional. So it's important that if you're going to be posting a listing, it's important that you've got good photos and a detailed property description, which we're going to get into in just a couple of minutes. When it comes to taking your photos, of course, the best thing that you could possibly do would be to hire per, a professional. But of course, if that's not in your budget, your homeowner doesn't feel the need to hire a professional, of course, you can take the photos yourself. But again, if you are going to take your photos yourself, make sure that you've learned the proper basics of taking photos. Um, what we've done is we've actually created a remote agent digital advertising guide for today's market, which you can get online through our website. So make sure you download that and that shows you how you can take better photos when it comes to your listing. So make sure you check that out. If you are using a professional photographer, of course, make sure that you go ahead and get permission to use those photos. If you're reusing photos from when the property was previously listed within your company, of course, make sure that you've got permission to use those photos again. Sometimes when a property photographer goes in and they take pictures of a property, they're only giving those photos a one-time use for that particular listing with that particular agent at that particular time. So make sure you've got permission to use the photos and make sure you're not stealing photos. It's unbelievable that this kind of stuff still has to be said, but just going to Google Street View and pulling up the address of the property and screenshotting that front view, the street view of the house and pasting that into your listing, that's not going to do any, anyone any good. Going to Property Shark and taking the tax photo for the property, that's not going to do you any good. These photos are actually copywritten and you don't actually have permission to use those photos. So you got to make sure that you actually have permission to use the pictures you're using. So make sure you're going out and getting those photos. If you can't use a professional photographer, go ahead and take the photos yourself. But again, during this difficult time of the coronavirus and COVID-19, we may have to resort to our homeowners having to take the photos. So we did create that guide, the remote agent guide, that will show you and your sellers how to take better photos of their property. If you haven't gotten that already, make sure you get your hands on that so you can review that document and learn how to take the best photos possible. And just a couple of minutes ago, I talked about not only are photos important, but so is the description. The description is a very important part because, again, that's going to be like a conversation between you and that potential buyer. You don't want your description just to be bullet points of the house and just say two bedrooms, one bath, dining room, living room, driveway. That, that's not going to sell anything. That's just a list. What you want to do is you want to make your description a sales pitch for the property. It's your elevator pitch. It's what's going to sell that home to that potential buyer. So make sure you're going through and you're talking about every aspect of the home that makes the property great. I know I've seen on Zillow, they have that section called what I like best about this home or what I love about the property. Maybe just talk to the homeowner and say, what are some of the things that you've loved about this house during the time that you've lived here? Let them tell you what they loved about the property. Then you can take their experiences with living at the home and you can convert that into your property description and you can tell potential buyers what's great about the home saying, oh, the, the sunset in the backyard is beautiful every single night when you watch the sun come down over the horizon uh, behind the trees, always lights up that back window. Things like that are going to be great. And those are things that you can also think about when you're taking your property photos as well. Either you're doing it yourself or if you're doing it with the homeowner and they say, oh, I love the sunset every single night. I can see it out the back window. Well, then you know what? When it comes to you know 6.30 at night, go into the dining room, take that picture. We're going to use that as a listing photo. So make sure you are not just doing bullet points, but you're having a conversation with someone about this property and what makes it so amazing. 
write it out as if you were talking to a friend because you want to just say, this is what is amazing about this property and just list it out again, not bullet points, but just discussing it. When it comes to creating your listing, when you enter a listing into My State MLS and New York State MLS, we give you a wide range of different options and features for you to select, to mark off, to check off when you create your listing. That includes things like all the different rooms that are in the property, the exterior amenities, any outbuildings. Make sure you're filling out as many of those as you possibly can, because again, you're going to want your listing to be as full and complete as possible. And these are types of things that can also help when it comes to search engine optimization, keeping your listing fresh, having it be as robust and descriptive as possible is really going to help that listing populate those search engines. So again, we talked about search engine optimization earlier in SEO. Having a fully complete listing with as much details, as much unique text as possible can potentially help that listing appear higher up on search results when potential buyers do a Google search for listings in their area. Next, we're gonna talk about virtual tours. If you've never done them before, now is some of the best times for you to start taking full advantage of them. They're free, they don't take a lot of work to do, and they can really, again, help boost your listing and create unique content for the property. Within My State MLS and New York State MLS, we include a virtual tour URL link, and we've always, always, always have told our members to utilize it. If you've got a virtual tour, go ahead and put that URL link for that video in there. If you don't have a video of the property, just link that property from where it is on your site. If you've got the information about that property posted on your company website, copy and paste that URL into that virtual tour field. You can also create virtual tour videos using slideshows. Uh, there's plenty of slideshow programs out there where you put all the photos into a slideshow and it creates a video for you. And you can upload that to YouTube, Vimeo, wherever you need to. But utilizing that virtual tour field, that's gonna not only appear on your listing within the MLS, but that virtual tour field also gets sent out to sites like Zillow and Trulia and Realtor.com. So if you've got a virtual tour, Potential buyers, when they go to those public sites, they can click that video, watch that video, and it's gonna better sell them on that home. If you don't have the virtual tour, like I said, don't let that field go to waste. Put a link to your company website, put a link to where that listing is on your company website, and put it in that virtual tour field because that's still gonna appear on sites like Zillow and Trulia. So when buyers go to the site, they'll say, oh, look, there's a virtual tour. They can click it. It may not actually be a virtual tour, but what it's going to do is it's going to drive traffic directly to your website. And that's exactly what you want because they may say, you know, I like this house. Since they're on your website, they may fill out that contact form directly on your site. That lead is gonna go directly to you as opposed to it being on Zillow or Trulia where it may be round robin, it may go to the broker down the street. If they're going to your website, you've got a much better chance of them going directly to you for more information as opposed to them clicking a contact form on a public third-party site like realtor.com. Uh, and again, going back to our remote agent guide where we talked about how you can take better photos, we've also included training on how you can go ahead and add music and easily upload a walkthrough video directly to YouTube so you can also add that to your listings as well. When it comes to giving your listing exposure, syndication is going to be one of the biggest things that you can utilize. Here at the MLS, we send out to over 100 sites, not only nationwide, but around the world. And unless your homeowner says they don't want their listings on a specific site, take full advantage of all the syndication options that are available to you. And certainly do not discount those international sites. Over $121 billion was spent on U.S. real estate by foreign investors and buyers in 2018. And that, I'm sure that number only went up last year as well. But it may not just be international buyers that are using these international sites. There may be local buyers who actually speak different languages. Their first language is actually not English. So they may be using those other foreign sites just because it's in their native language so they can easily browse it. So by all means, make sure you're utilizing all of the different syndication platforms that are available to you. Uh, with my state MLS and New York state MLS, we make sure we give you as many options as possible where you can go ahead and select each and every site that you wanna go to. Having an IDX feed and opting your listings into the IDX feed is another great way to get additional marketing on your listings. Uh, as we mentioned before, if you want to increase the number of listings on your company website, 
you can incorporate an IDX feed onto your site. IDX also works the other way. By putting your listings into the IDX database, you're giving your listings the chance to be seen on other brokerages' website. Yes, that potential buyer may not see your listing on your website now. They may be seeing it on another company website, so they're not buying it directly from you. However, they are going to be working with a broker that's in your area that's going to be willing to show that property around for them. And you're going to still be able to make that sale because that other agent was able to pull up your listing on their website and sell it to one of their customers. So it's always important that you opt in for that IDX because depending on where you are, that listing could show up on dozens of other additional sites beyond the regular syndication partners. And you never know who's going to be looking for properties where. So taking advantage of all the syndication options that you can is very important. And with that being said, that wraps up week one of Marketing May. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. We hope to see you again next week for week two, where we're going to be talking about even more tricks and tools that you can utilize to further expand your business. And on behalf of everyone here at State Listings, Inc., we hope you, your friends and family are all being safe, healthy, and happy during this time of self-quarantine, social distancing. We just want to make sure that everyone is doing well. Until then, we'll see you next week.